Welcome back to another episode of Excuse My Grandma. It's Kim and my co-host. Grandma Gail. So, Grandma, I'm still in New York. You're still in Florida. What have you been up to? Well, this weekend was my favorite day. I We flew to New Orleans uh, to see my grandson at Tulane. One question. You say yes. New Orleans, New Orleans, Nolens. Clearly, well, I don't say Nolens because that sounds like somebody who's uh, who's lives there. Oh, that's what the, yeah, the I, I, no, however you want to say it, I say it New Orleans. Okay. Uh, New so Orleans. Said- I think either I think either is correct. Uh, whatever it is, we went down on Spirit Airways, which is an experience in itself. First of all, there are not that many flights from Palm Beach to New Orleans or New, New Orleans. Um, so it's very hard to get there this time of the year. Maybe in another two weeks, there are a lot of flights. But anyway, um, we got to the airport. We left our house at 5.30, got to the airport to make a 7.30 flight, which was wonderful. And the seats, if you get the two front rows, they're like bucket seats. And I think you pay $50 more. But on Spirit, you pay for everything. You pay for your 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 uh, handbag, you pay for your wheelies, you pay, there's no, if you want a glass of water, you pay for that. So it's like a come as you pay kind of airline. But the air, the plane itself was clean as a whistle. Very, very accommodating uh, uh, crew. And it was great. We got there at 8.15. It was a terrific flight going. And I got off the plane. And I don't know what possessed me not to wear a heavy jacket. It was so cold and cloudy, which it normally is not. And it was so warm when we had left Florida. So it is usually similar weather, maybe a few degrees cooler. Anyway, we get off the plane. Now I'm wearing a a shirt and a sweater that I took out of your closet, as a matter of fact. I'm wearing your clothes now. So (laughs) I got off the, I'm freezing and I couldn't wear the plane. They keep everything so air conditioned down there because I guess they wanted, because of the humidity, but there was no humidity. It was just plain cold. So we got to our hotel, which was fine. It was like, you know, like a, a motel type of place, very clean and nice. We got, she said, we're a little early to check in the room. I said, that's all right. So my, your brother picked us up and I wanted to go for beignets, which in New Orleans is the greatest. But this one particular place has Oreo stuffing inside the beignets. Oh God, you should have taken a photo. You, I took photos. I took photos, but I have nothing to show. I have a movie to show you how we were eating them. Cafe du Mont or whatever? No, 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 no. This is a small little, um, little kind of coffee place that I had been to twice before when I visited him that's right near his campus. And they have one lady behind the counter making the beignets. So it's very, it's a very, you know, kind of um, home cooking kind of thing. And she's the only one for whatever reason, because Cafe Damone does not have it with the the Oreo in it. Mm-hmm. it. She It came, he says, we'll never get in. Sure enough, there are two people online, a couple of people inside. We get in, we order. It's the greatest thing you ever ate in your entire life. So I said, why are there no people at it? It was a Saturday now at around 1030. He said, if the sun doesn't come out on Saturday, people are depressed. Everything in New Orleans is dependent on weather. Wow. So I, I said, you know, that's similar to what Kim said last weekend in New York. It was like a burst of spring because it was sunny. Where like it's to, people's moods are dependent on the weather. It's so funny. So then we ate that and we walked around a bit. Uh, in the area afterwards, we went over to his house, which we looked at. And I have to tell you, if you think you were living in a decrepit house when you were up at Cornell, this house, the, the, it's half fit finished, but the school is almost over. So they're living in a construction site. And yeah. outside, there's there's a backyard. I Because originally I said, you should get a grill and you could grill out there because I was thinking he has a house with a backyard. The house in the backyard, it's like a he's got a, a tractor equipment in the back. It, it, the guy hasn't finished and he's got a port of sand in the front of the house. So I'm sure the neighbors are thrilled with this whole thing from these fraternity guys. But the, his room is nice. They have all new baths. They have a cute little kitchen uh, with wires hanging from the ceiling and from the walls, but all right. Um, so that we went over to the house. I saw some of his um, his roommates and then we went over to the museum. We actually, no, we went then for lunch and we ordered fried oysters. Then we ordered a big platter, five pounds of 
these crayfish, awesome. which you knock on the, um, they take their heads off and then you have to open them up. So you get a little piece of um, meat out. That's the most delicious thing you ever tasted, but there are no, you could eat a, a thousand of them. It's like one shrimp. So right. that was fun. Then Poppy ordered a gumbo. So we ate everything. Everything yeah. was great. Then yeah. we said, okay, now our next activity was to go to the museum area. And we went to the World War II Memorial, which is the biggest um, tourist attraction in New Orleans. It And it's amazing. I mean, it goes over like a two block area and it's sort of almost like the Holocaust Museum that they did in Washington, that it's all pictures, movies, and then displays of things during, you know, pre-war, post-war, and during the war. It's fabulous. Anybody that goes there must do that. It's a must-see um, thing. We got to the third floor. When I didn't tell you, my, uh, my grandson went and he parked the car in a lot, and he put a credit card in to you know, to pay for the space because you had to. And he kept saying, it's not going through, it's not going through. So finally, he says, oh, I'm sure it worked. So we got to the third floor of the museum and I don't know, there was a window that overlooked the parking lot and we see his car was booted. Oh. So for those who don't know what a boot is, you can no longer move your car because they put a heavy uh, metal brace on your back tire. So I, I said, he said, I think my car is booted. I said, oh no. So now I said, we have to leave now. So we go down and now it's a big production because you, you literally want to take it off. You have to call somebody, but if, if, in this particular lot, evidently, if you, we, we they asked for, for a um, a number, uh, which we had on the ticket that they put on the car. We did it. We had to pay again. This time it went through naturally, which was ridiculous. And then he himself could take the boot off. If oh. it was me. I would still be there trying to take that boot off. You have to go on the floor and put a code in like a little, like a safe on the bottom of the boot. This was, I was worn out. I, I yeah. took a home and rest. So yeah. that was the end of our afternoon on Saturday. And, uh, but I have to say for all those going to New Orleans, make a little trip. If you're going downtown to the, you know, to the Bur to Bourbon Street and that whole area, this, I think it's about, it's the beginning part of that, but sort of a little out. It's about 15 minutes away from downtown. It's a must see. Yeah. I feel like you started on such a high with the beignet and then it just kept getting worse. No, no, it was getting better and better until he, the boot appeared. Oh. The boot was a terrible moment. I don't think I ever had that. Yeah. So. I wish we did this Zoom while you were still there because you could have been like, Phil, <laughs> and showed me eating the. The bed day. Oh my gosh. We I never ate so much in my life. And then we had a delicious dinner as well, but I don't want to discuss that. Okay. I think uh, I get the picture. We get the picture was constant eating. Yes. Well, that's really fun. You had it was fun. I feel like that's more than I mean it, it poured in New York City. So you know everything just kind of gets like <laughs> the same thing. Outside and the um uh, the like traffic's awful and all of that but um you know I did I, I you do? did a lot of social plans um I just did dinners both nights like girls dinners I've been going to the same two places I'm trying to be more adventurous um I went on one date during the day in like a hotel lobby which is apparently fun except for at 1 p.m it was completely empty oh, so God. The vibes were definitely like kind of off for that. It's hard to find trendy spots, get in. I was so surprised because I've heard of this, like people are talking about this place. It's like in, there's this hotel called Hotel Chelsea. Right. I, oh, yes. That was an old hotel yeah. that was uh, used to house all the artists. Okay. Yeah. So it's a super old hotel, but I believe they renovated the inside yes. somewhat recently. And everyone's been talking about how trendy the restaurant is. And I was so surprised he could get into this restaurant that's like so hard. And then, of course, it wasn't in the restaurant. It was just like in the lobby. So I think uh, there was like some miscommunication there. But that was that. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's kind of I didn't do too many things. But this week's pretty busy on Thursday is um, a UJA generosity gala, which I'm on the board for. Um, so, for those who don't know, that's United Jewish Appeal, 
which is a, uh, you know, a very worthwhile uh, charity uh, that also gives here as well as overseas. Yeah. Um, and uh, it has 850 people coming. Oh, fabulous. Oh, that's some, that's some number. That's great. Well, I think in these times, everybody has to band together. So that'll be fun. And uh, on Friday, I'm going to the opera. Oh, I love that. What are you seeing? Romeo and Juliet. Oh. I don't know. Right. It'll, it's at the Met Metropolitan Opera. I bet it'll be wonderful. I've never been to an opera and we got these tickets for free. They would have wanted me to go with you, but I'll bring a friend. Um, <laughs> Good. And we start with like a backstage experience and stuff. So I think it'll be pretty cool. Oh, that sounds wonderful. Oh, I, I'm I'm jealous. That sounds great. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, just random plans. I think the city in New York, uh, New York is supposed to be beautiful this week, starting tomorrow. So mm -hmm. I think you're going to get much warmer weather, so you'll be able to really enjoy the city. I'm surprised you don't you didn't go over to the Whitney on uh, over the weekend. That's a very nice little restaurant downstairs, also for lunch. And I love that area to walk around. I didn't do that. I know. I gather. <laughs> From so the Oscars were last night and I went to watch at my friend's house and uh she just moved in with her boyfriend in um like Hudson Square Tribeca kind of area like along the West Side Highway nice. and I walked from my apartment to there. Oh, nice! Uh, which is a long walk and it was pretty windy, but it was so nice because you're kind of walking. You could walk on the West Side Highway or through Hudson Square and it's all like the old buildings and it's very quiet. <laughs> It was a nice walk. Yeah. Um, good. Speaking of, let's talk Oscars. Um, let's talk about the fashion first. Yeah, so, because the Oscars were a non-event. Yeah, I watched it. I mean, I didn't feel like happy and like excited watching it, but I also didn't think it was bad. Like it was I thought it was awful. I thought it was awful. I hate when people make political statements on on these kind of uh, shows, but I guess that happens all the time. It well, just think, annoys me. I think it's a mix because I think sometimes if Hollywood says nothing, we're like, why aren't you using your platform to speak up? And, and how are you ignoring what's going on in the world? And then when they say something political, obviously when it's one-sided. in well, That's the problem. Defended and they need me to rebut the other side. Yeah, I guess. I mean, it was odd. I guess we'll st start then with that rather than the fashion. But you're, I think, referring the only like really political moment was Jonathan Glazer's Oscar speech um, for Zone of Interest, where he I still don't really understand what he was saying. Uh, I think he just, he, he's, he's not proud of being Jewish. Then he should go let him go to the Soviet Union. See how good he we talk about like this is the exact <laughs> quote. He said, Right now, we stand here as men who refute their Jewishness and the Holocaust being hijacked by an occupation which has led to conflict for so many, for so many innocent people. Yeah. So he's he's pro-Palestinian, which is fine. He can do whatever he wants, uh, but he should be a little ashamed of himself um, as a Jew to be talking about that. And also, not only as a Jew, Israel was attacked on October 7th. They were not the aggressors. So you can never they try to flip this conversation, which I find offensive. Um, you know, there are innocent Palestinians, no question, caught in um, in a quagmire. But nobody is innocent in war. And we've done this ourselves during the Second World War and the First World War, when war is war. And uh, when a country is attacked for no reason other than hatred and religious uh, hatred, um, and their goal is to eliminate an entire race, um, they are not, they don't want to be a partner. They're not interested. They, they've refused two-state solutions many times, and they don't want to negotiate the release of hostages. And the world has to remember who the victim was. The victims were those settlers and those young people who were at that concert, who were basically all peace-loving people. And they were attacked, brutalized, raped, beheaded. So there's no conversation about Israel's legitimacy in this war. So they want to make an excuse and have a conversation. They can say whatever they want, but history will tell it out. And I feel sorry for anybody who's caught in the war. Israel is the only country I know that puts flyers out 
in the in the middle of a war telling people to move. Uh, you know, this is war. This is not a game. So um, and they're fighting for their survival against a horrible enemy, Iran, and their their other people around them. So, I, you know, but I, this Glazer, I don't get. I don't know him. I don't want to know him. I don't, I'm not going to see his movie. And um, as far as I'm concerned, he's finished. I couldn't care less. Oh, so so Emma Gale is saying I'm over with this Glazer. <laughs> so you would not watch the movie? No. I will. I wouldn't watch it, and I. I'm really not interested. I'm sure it's probably a very good film, but Jeremiah Gale's not going to give it any kind of um, notoriety or any conversation about it. I've spoken too much about it now, anyway. Right. Um. The other thing they did were a lot of celebrities wore these tiny red pins, calling yeah. for a ceasefire in Gaza. Yeah. Um. I had to look at the organization's yeah, website. What is to see what it really meant um because i think the hard thing is people were asked on the carpet why are you wearing it and they're giving their they opinion no <laughs> did they know oh yeah like i think the people who wore it and not everyone wore it like i think the people who wore it were definitely aware of like it's for it's uh, provided by this organization called artists for ceasefire yeah. so it's just people saying they want peace um yeah. No, not peace. They want to cease fire so that Hamas can re can reestablish themselves. And they don't talk about what about the hostages. I, I'm not interested in any of this conversation. That was, with that was going to be my point. Hostages. Um. So the the organization said on their news release that yeah. the symbolizes collective support for an immediate and permanent ceasefire, the release of all hostages, okay. and for okay. the delivery of human humanitarian aid to civilians in Gaza. Yeah. So right. fine, but Perfect. I think a lot of people were asked on the carpet, like I saw Rami Youssef, who he was like, yeah, I want like Palestinian, whatever. And that's why he said he was wearing it. That's not what this artist right. ceasefire resembles, according to them. But people are going to say what they think. And that's when it kind of, I think, gets... See, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, what I'm disappointed in is, is that a lot of these people who have platforms really are not educated on what the, what's been going on the last 75 years. And that bothers me because, you know, they make statements without looking up the history of the conflict. There have been, you know, many authors and people, peacekeepers who have been trying to do a two-state solution for many, many years. It's been rejected by the parties in the area, not Israel. So uh, now, uh, like now the by the way, two-state solution right now is not happening because you're not going to give anybody a state who's willing to attack them from the river to the sea. So that that's the end of that conversation right now. And also the crazy thing is like, they're like, we're calling for a ceasefire. Like clearly Israel wants a ceasefire. We're talking about like, and, it, and then how can you then not take the side of like Hamas does not want a ceasefire. They're terrorists. Correct. So it's like, you can't, if you're calling for a ceasefire, then you're not like telling Israel like, you're not understanding what the conflict's all about. The yeah. conflict is about destruction of a state and destruction of a people. They don't want. They've been. They keep walking away from the negotiating table on the hostages. What is so difficult about releasing those hostages who are probably? And Kimberly, my heart breaks for this every time I talk about it. They're probably almost dead anyway, if any are still alive or very few are alive. I mean, the one-year-old baby can't possibly be alive. What possible reason to take a one-year-old baby is beyond me. So it, it's such barbarity. It's beyond my even my con my contemplation of humanity, of what anybody could do. So therefore, I don't think we're dealing with a country. We're not dealing with rational people on the other side. And and I think, unfortunately, Israel's in a terrible situation. They cannot give up the fight until they get some kind of <coughs> assurances that they're going to release the hostages. Okay, let's go back to the- Let's go back to the fashion, because we're not, un unfortunately, you and I are not solving this issue ourselves. I would like to. I would know how to solve it, but I want to um, talk about the, the fashion. Talk about the fashion and also just any strong reactions to winners- well, I loved Oppen. I loved the movie Oppenheimer. I thought that deserved it. I didn't think anybody came close. And of course, the Academy awesome. felt. I think. I think they got nine awards or whatever. They deserved it. Everybody who got the award deserved it. And as the uh, the husband and wife team, which was very wonderful, they've done uh, several movies together, and they're terrific and they're brilliant. I so think they also, deserved it. 
it seemed that the movie Poor Things won everything. Like they yeah. won so many. And so I had a feeling. So the morning of, I was like, I'm going to watch this movie. Do you see it? No, There's I no- didn't see it, but I'm going to see it. Oh, well, I don't <laughs> personally, I, after 10 minutes, I almost threw up. I was like, it is so disturbing. It is so like, um, they're doing like open heart surgery oh. and they're like poking each other's eyeballs out. I was Why? like, what was the purpose? It was like, the idea was almost like a Frankenstein woman, like that he brought this woman back to life and she was, uh, I mean, they call her like retarded, like she was totally uh, couldn't speak and her rediscovering the world again. Um, it, it was so not for me. Well, it's disturbing. People like that. People it shows you where the world. I think like, that shows you where the where the people are in the academy. <laughs> yeah, maybe I don't know. And listen, like Emma Stone, amazing actress. I'm yes, sure. She is. Whatever. Like I get it, but it was like how could people be so obsessed with this movie? I couldn't even get through the first five minutes. Okay. Well, that's what happens. You know, there's sometimes these little quirky movies pick up tremendous credibility and they love Emma Stone and they, they, they love, you know, they, the Academy goes for sometimes those quirky things, yeah. which is fine. I mean, maybe it shows a whole different side of uh, cinematography. I don't right. know. There's something I'm missing, like, and I love a quirky movie, but this was just, yeah, I don't know. My favorite part about the award show was the performance from Ryan Gosling of I'm Just Ken. Mine too. Mine too. Well, I only came in at, at when Robert Downey won the, the supporting actor, and I thought he was great. And then he did that song. That stole the whole show. So I mean, that was fa- he's fabulous. I mean, he was terrific. That was really fun. If... if award shows want to stay relevant it's with things like that that like it's performances it's like things that are going to be clipped on the internet and people are going to like love of course you have to give the awards out and do all of that but it's like I don't know. Well, I, think- I think they've. I think they have zero zero on in Kim making it shorter because it. What used to be so dreadful, you'd be still watching at twelve o'clock and waiting for the best picture. They know that nobody's watching after a certain point. And I, mean, I have to be very truthful. Kimmel lost me. He's another one that I can stop uh, watching because he also was not funny, and he puts. His own, uh, you know. Uh, of course, we don't have to discuss that tweet conversation that was s- silly. The, the Trump shouldn't have tweeted, and he shouldn't have answered the tweet. Not a real tweet. Yes. No. Yes, I looked it up today. Oh. He did tweet. He didn't do it exactly the way Jimmy Kimmel said it, but he did tweet that you're terrible. <laughs> My God, I thought he was. And they, and they and the producers told them not to say anything but you can't no, you Trump can't answer. help himself and the other guys can't help themselves from answering you have like if it i mean he didn't have to but i think like if the former president is tweeting and it's that <laughs> and saying you're awful it's funny to bring up like i i don't think that's bad to- well i don't know i thought the, i don't think either one should be tweeting <laughs> the, the, both of them should just also, take this whole thing on the show is he reads mean tweets i don't know if you've ever seen that oh is that true oh i don't watch his show now so i'm definitely watching a show anyway and poor then then he had to throw in george stephanopoulos he called him snephalopoulos or something at that thing i don't get the whole thing and trump didn't say that in the tweet okay so i was, think he said that was, in the past before maybe so he just threw um, that into the he joke. threw that in the whole thing became a mess yeah i don't know it, it was definitely a hard watch um okay fashion wise what, all right fashion wise uh, my opinion too yeah. many things around their stomach and a lot of big sleeves. There were a lot of capes going on with all kinds of ruffles. One gorgeous woman at the end, I don't know what her name, you probably know the lady in that pink dress at the end. She's so beautiful with blonde hair. Oh, Whatever, she she was absolutely gorgeous. She wore a dress, I I think I'd kill my stylist if I had somebody come out. It was uh, mounds and mounds of fabric on this very- Was that who it was? Did she come out like, okay, so basically the two two, women. Yeah, yeah. So it's the two upcoming stars of The Wicked. um, Yes, yes. Ariana Grande and Cynthia Erivo. Ariana Grande. Oh, I thought that was, no, that was great. You like that? Okay. For her, for her, absolutely. Like, I didn't, I had no. That just shows you. I didn't, I, she's tiny. 
Yeah, but but that's just her look. She's like a Lady Gaga kind of like she's gonna. Be- oh, then she was all right. Okay. Yeah, that, I didn't have a problem with that. The the things that kind of confused me. Well, there were. I agree. There was a lot of ruching. There was a lot of corsets. It didn't bother me. I think what was so Emily Blunt wore that gorgeous Scaparelli gown right. that had the beads and that like V in the front. Right. So I, but I didn't think the V ended in the right place. For me, I'm like, so it had like those floating shoulders, which I didn't watch the carpet. So I didn't even see that bit. I just saw when she was sitting in her seat and I was like, oh my gosh, the dress doesn't fit her. Like it's so structured that it's like above her shoulder. Like I didn't get that it was structurally supposed to be that like. um, There were a lot of gimmicks. Gimmick. Like a lot of gimmicks. So to me, I'm like, that would have been gorgeous without the gimmick or like it, or it should have been really exaggerated. Like, okay. it just, like it didn't fit her. I, I don't know. I thought some of this stuff, you know, I love when they, they wear simple gowns. These were, girls are all, and women are all beautiful. I mean, no matter what they come out with, they always look gorgeous. The one that I thought was very pretty was the one with the black polka dot dress, the strapless, which I That's thought Jennifer was beautiful. Lawrence. Yeah, she looked fun. gorgeous. Um, and also I loved Sally Fields. Sally Fields looked beautiful. At the, I thought she was beautiful. I was so happy to see her because I haven't seen her in a while. Um, uh, to me, the fashion was all right, nothing great. I thought some of the people in the audience actually looked prettier than the people that were on stage. They kept showing right. was like people sitting thing. in the front row. And I- About uh, Emma Stone, like in the Louis Vuitton white with the big exaggerated kind of peplum. Well, but her dress, didn't it? It, it was, she ripped it in the back. In she, the back, oh my in God. In the back. So the poor girl, she, I don't know how she, she, she did it when she was dancing, but I don't know. That was, it was either too tight or something wasn't, there was a malfunction. But she would have called she looked, attention to that if you were her. No, I would have because she she can't close it. And she has, she went up on the stage and she was on an angle at certain points. So she had to make a joke out of it. Actually, I thought she did pretty well with that. She was funny. So Margot Robbie, she wore that black Versace kind of corseted sparkly dress. Okay. I don't remember. I didn't really watch the red carpet. So I have to leave this up to you. Did you love it? Uh, I'm glad she didn't wear pink. Yeah, I think she was- <laughs> Can't look bad, but I thought that was great. But again, like that structured look that I like. You like that. Um, yeah. And then did you like the, the Wicked Stars wore pink and green? It was all right. I mean, I didn't love any of them. The only one I loved was the sequin dress on, um, you know, the one who was co-starring. America Ferreira's. Yeah. I loved her. I, first of all, I thought her figure was beautiful. And it was just a very simple, pretty bodice. You would have looked pretty in that dress. I, lo- I loved it on her. She looked beautiful. She lo- looked absolutely perfect. Yeah. And there were no extra pieces of material and all that other stuff with the arms and the sleeves. I, simple is better, even on stage. Because for the, except, I guess, like you're saying, the pink was over-exaggerated and she accomplished what she wanted to be. But mostly I like the simple dresses better. Yeah. Um, I think the dresses are better than the show. I think they should stop after the red carpet and just give give the envelope to to Al Pacino and then he would read it right away and we could go to bed at eight (laughs) o'clock. He hosted the whole thing. It would be done in two seconds. Why was he like, Oh, I see Oppenheimer. <laughs> well, I don't oh, think anybody God. anybody told him he has to say the other names. I mean, maybe he didn't was include in. No, what do you mean? You say and the Oscar goes to Oppenheimer, or you say Oppenheimer. You don't say like, look, I see Oppenheimer. Like, what does that mean? Well, first of all, he didn't announce, which is a fault of the, of somebody. Oh, he didn't give the other nominees, uh, you know, the the different names. I guess because in all the other categories, they had passed yeah, um, stars all up there introducing the specific people. So he had to read the other names and then say, and the winner goes to. He yeah. just went right to the card. He didn't care. Oh my gosh! I just realized. <laughs> Uh, I don't know well, it was over early it was perfect right I could watch Abbott Elementary right afterwards I was thrilled <laughs> it's such a cute little show it's about it takes place in a school and they're all wonderful and I think that's a very big money maker for ABC and I think that's one of the reasons that they moved the whole Oscar thing up earlier so it wouldn't interfere with their show 
Oh, really? Uh, that's my take. I have no inside information on this, Kimberly. Nobody at ABC called me, but I have a feeling that they didn't want to eliminate that that show. And has a very wide audience. It's possible. Anything's possible. Okay, we've summed up the Academy Awards. We've summed up uh, any uh, anything else that we're looking forward to this week. Um, Besides your dinner, I'm I'm going to an Indian restaurant tonight, so I'll give you a full report because um, I love Indian food. So we're going to try that tonight with friends with a girlfriend of mine. That sounds fun. Yeah, yeah. Um, do we have like a 1950s movie of the week that had to do with? Academy Oscars, or what was the Oscar winner during let's see what year do we want to see I don't know you better look what have what year 1963 the day the year I got married okay the Oscar really winner Tiffany's. was it breakfast uh, for, for best picture yeah was Lawrence of Arabia oh that was so fabulous oh yeah those were great movies <laughs> that really they, they, he had that was really a great movie yeah Terrific. Like, Terrific. What okay. was 64? When was Breakfast at Tiffany's? Maybe that was earlier. Maybe that was 62. Uh, My Fair Lady was 1964. Oh my God. Now we're getting even better. No. <laughs> With Rex that, Harris. That's surprising to me though, because I feel like a movie musical doesn't usually win. It was. It doesn't usually. I think, La, uh, what was it? Uh, the one oh, about. Man, it was pretty yeah. Cool. yeah. And that was great. Mostly they don't. And West Side Story one. There are a few of them because they, they stand out so, uh, you know, really remarkably that you can't deny them to be the best, the best music, uh, the best movie. But yeah. anyway, so uh, the, the Oppenheimer was pretty good, and I enjoyed it when I was watching it. It made you really think, and I think it's very topical in today's world. So glad it won all the awards it did. Yeah. Um, I guess we don't really have time to do an Ask Grandma anything. No, not today because we've been talking too long. <laughs> but we'll do one in the next episode and definitely get to that soon on social media. We're Excuse My Grandma. So follow us on Instagram and TikTok. And have a good day, guys. 